So now that we've taken a simple look at actions, let's move on to filters. In the last video, I mentioned that actions allow you to execute code when something happens in WordPress. However, unlike actions, filters allow you to modify WordPress data before it's stored or executed. Let me show you what I mean. In this first example, we're gonna take a look at a filter that WordPress provides that allows you to change the length of post excerpts. So if we go back to my homepage here, you can see that each one of these posts has a block of text underneath here. And that is the post excerpt. And by default, WordPress sets that to a set amount of characters. Now we can actually modify what WordPress outputs here. So let's take a look. So if we have a filter, and we're just gonna do this just like an action. We can do add filter, and then the name of that filter is excerpt length. And we also need to put in a function name here, and we're just gonna call this custom excerpt length. Now let's create that function. Function custom excerpt length. And we are going to be getting the length. Now, I wanna point out a difference between filters and actions. With actions, sometimes you get some data passed to your function and other times you don't. Like in this template redirect, we didn't get anything there. However, with filters, we will always get something passed because WordPress expects data to come in, it expects it to be modified, and then it expects it to be returned back to the process. And typically, when you're working with a filter, you'll almost always wanna start it off by returning something down here at the bottom. And since the name of the variable that we're bringing in is length, I'm just going to return length down at the bottom. So to give you an idea of what this is giving us, if we just echo out length, and then go back to our home page, you'll see that we're getting this 55 right above each one of our post excerpts. So that's the number of words that we'll output here. So if we wanna modify that, all we have to do is change the length and then return that variable back. So if we wanna say the length is equal to 20, we can set it to 20 and then return that new number. We can come back, refresh the page, and now our excerpts are at 20 characters. And likewise, if we wanted to increase that number, we can set this to something like, oh, 100. We can save that, come back, refresh, and now our post excerpts are at 100. So this is just a really simple example as how a filter works in WordPress. But I wanna show you something a little bit more complicated now. If we go back to our functions.php, in our last video, we created a function that would save the titles of posts every time something was saved in WordPress. Well, if we wanted to allow this function to become more extendable, we could use a filter to do that. So in this example, we're going to add a filter to this message variable. Right now it gets the title of the post and then adds was just saved to the end of it. Well, let's say we wanted to make that so it's editable to other developers or ourselves from other places inside of our code. There's this other function called apply filters. And what this does is it takes in two major parameters, two required parameters, I should say. The first one is the name of the filter. So in this case, we're actually creating a filter. So we're gonna call this post log message. And then the second parameter in this function is actually going to be the thing that we want to send along to whatever function picks it up. So in this case, we want it to be our message. So when we create our filter, we're going to get past this string that has the title and the was just saved to the end of it. So let's create our function now. Let's go up here and let's add a new filter. 
and we want to hook into our post log message. And this is a good time to bring up that you can just put anonymous functions inside of here. You don't actually have to type in the string of the function and then declare it. If it's something that you're not going to be reusing over and over again, this is totally fine. So now that we have our function, we need to make sure that we receive the message and we're going to want to return a message. Oops, return message. So now we can make message equal to whatever we want. But in this example, we want to take in the message and concatenate something to it. We're going to say, we're just going to do a space. It was saved at, and then we're going to do the date here. We're just going to do date. And let's grab the date that we used in our other example. I like the way that's formatted. So if we just add that to the end and hit save, we can go back to our page here. Let's pick a post we want to edit. Let's just pick this one. Let's test our filter and hit save. Once that's saved, we can go back to our post log. And then it says, let's test our filter was just saved. It was saved at March 22nd, 2019 at 408 AM. That's perfect. And now I want to move on to one last example. And in this example, it's going to revolve around modifying plugins. So as you keep working with WordPress, you're going to find that you don't just need to deal with WordPress core plugins, add functionality. And sometimes you need to modify that functionality or do something when an action occurs. So in this last example, let's take a look at Yoast SEO. This is a plugin that we're going to find on most WordPress sites. So it's likely that you'll have it on yours. So if you go to their website, you can see that they have a big list of actions and filters that exist within their plugin. Let's take a look at one of these filters down here. They have this WP SEO JSON LD output. And to get an idea of what that means, if we go to our homepage and look at the source, we can see between lines nine and 21, all the stuff that Yoast SEO has put into our site. Well, this bottom line here on line 21 is the JSON LD. This is what search engines use to get information about your website. And let's say, for example, that you did not want this potential action key here. This is basically just telling Google or whoever else that people can search on your site. Well, if you didn't want search and you didn't want Google to think that you could search, I mean, you're kind of stuck. Well, with a filter, you can actually change that behavior. So let's jump back over to our functions.php and give it a try. So let's add a filter. The, we want to add a filter to that filter we just saw on the Yoast SEO website. And we want to accept the JSON. And we want to return some JSON but not before making some modifications. So let's take a look at actually what it's giving us before we do anything. So if we just echo out print and die, we can go to our homepage, hit refresh and see exactly what it's giving us. So we have all the information that the JSON array has here with our name, potential action, some other pieces of data. Well, we can change this information before it gets printed. So for example, we could say that the JSON name is no longer WordPress hooks. It's something else. We can go back in here, refresh, and now the name is something else. But we originally came in here to remove this potential action. So we can go back and say unset 
JSON potential action. If we hit save, we can go back, hit refresh, and now that's gone. Now we have everything that we want. So if we remove this die function, we can save, go back, and now we have our home page just like normal. And if we open up our source, you can see that our JSON is now the way that we want it. So I hope you're starting to see the power of filters. Not only have we been able to change data that's come through WordPress, but we've also been able to create our own filters and modify our own data and the data that's given to us by third-party plugins. Combined with the knowledge that we have of actions, we can really take control of our WordPress site. However, there is so much more that we can learn about actions and filters. So if you'd be interested in a more advanced course, make sure to leave a comment below and let me know that that's something that you're interested in. And like always, like and subscribe and leave a comment also if you have any questions. Hey guys, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Kinsta. If you are looking for hosting, they are an awesome company that specializes in WordPress. Um, if you are on a, another hosting and you're looking to upgrade, definitely give these guys a look. They will even migrate your site for free, so you don't have to worry about transferring files and images and the database and all that kind of stuff. They will do it for you. If you're running a small blog or a WooCommerce store, they specialize in all that kind of stuff. So give them a look. The link is in the description, and if you click it and sign up, you'd be supporting me and the channel.